Bucks here, and I'm definitely ready to go over this champ. So you know, there's there's a ton of champs in this game, and you know you know they're good, right? You've heard they're good, you've seen them in action, uh, but you have so many irons in the fire, you don't know who to build. And this is one of those champs that really is that good. Build him out. Uh, so definitely a game changer uh, for rocking the fat. Where where is this guy? Okay, so I was trying to up my my clan boss damage. He did he did do that, but this guy right here, the fat rocks. Okay, there are so, so many places to use him. He's an ally tag champion. So if you don't have Longbeard or uh, uh, Krila, there's there's only a handful of them. There's a uh, Farrakh and the Fat, and then uh, Catacomb Counselor. And Catacomb Counselor brings an ally attack for three champions or something, but other than that, he brings nothing else with his ally attack. The other two legendaries, they bring, you know, increased damage when everybody attacks or, or increase your attack power. You know, they do something, and so does uh, the Fat. So does the Fat. He's basically like a legendary. So let's look at his whole kit. And talk about the many places that we can use him. And I'll show the exact reason I, I built him out. But he is definitely, definitely cool. Now, he's a barbarian. This could be useful. I've already gone through my barbarian's uh, faction wars. But could help you a ton in faction wars. Uh, this guy does hit hard, by the way. So, like, worth putting some gear on him. Uh, my gear will look a little strange because I'm, I'm, I'm built, I built him for an unkillable team. So, he had to have very specific speeds. And when you have five members running at perfectly tuned speeds. It's difficult to have the exact gear that you want doing that. But let's check him out. His A1 breaks defense. Well, that's great. If you can keep this guy alive, if you have somebody like Iron Brago and Brogni, you can bring this guy along to get that ally attack. Maybe you don't have a counterattack champion. You don't have to, there's no special, I mean, when you tune the team, it's not that hard. Uh, in principle, it it can seem overwhelming, but if you're not making an unkillable team, you basically just have to tune one for one or maybe, you know, getting to where you're going four turns for every three turns of the clan boss. It's pretty simple. Uh, I've made an old video. I think I called it the Speed Tuning 101. You can check that out if you're just trying to get your, your team in order. It it changes everything. Just having your team go in the order you want and need them to go in. But aside from that, an A1 that breaks defense could absolutely be useful on the clan boss. If he's not unkillable, you'll want to put a little defense on him. Get up. Get him, not cra You don't have to go crazy depending on who you have to keep him alive. Uh, definitely an A1 breaking defense is good on any boss. Any boss that you come up against. Uh, A2. This is really cool. The Brand of Shame. I do love that this guy actually fights people by whooping ass with a with a <laughs> branding iron. That's pretty cool, right? Uh, but this, he attacks one enemy. as a guaranteed chance, once he's booked, to put HP burn and two poisons up. Every boss in this game, you're going to benefit from putting an HP burn and two poisons up. Clan boss, all the Doom Tower bosses... So, you know, I don't know where you are. Everybody's in a different place in this game. But he brings all of this. Two poisons and an HP burn. Then his big ally attack. Beat down. All right, so this doesn't just pull an ally attack. It increases everybody's crit rate by 30% and their crit damage by 30%, making them all hit harder. It guarantees their crit, makes them hit harder. That's for three turns. So in most of your content... If you're using him and you don't have 100% crit rate on your other, the rest of your team, no problem. And he's going to make that crit damage go up in case you don't have those six star crit damage gloves or whatever. And then they all attack. Now he does not, but he does this for the rest of your team. Uh, so he's not selfish. He plays well with, with others. And then there's body block. Uh, this can be frustrating on an unkillable team. If in my situation, we'll go over that in a minute. But this is a really great move to keep him alive since he is an attack-based attack champion. It deflects 20% of all incoming damage that he receives onto all the other allies. Uh, that's pretty slick. It's like the opposite of ally protection. The damage will be spread equally across all allies. 
So it's just 20% of his damage mitigated. And then if you have support champions, defensive champions around him, they can take that damage from him. It's not going to be that much 20% of his incoming damage. It just helps keep him alive. So that's pretty cool. Um, now, Masteries, I've got some. All right, you're fixing to see why my Masteries are so screwed up. But we will, let's talk about this guy. Uh, with single target attacks, there's really nothing that you're going to want other than War Master. I, I, you could increase his crit damage. I could possibly see you doing that. But but I, I just don't, you know, in the end, he's not AOEing anybody. Helm Smasher, I don't really see a need for it. So getting down into War Master with a pretty basic build and then... Some of this could be anything you want. For regular content, I just went into Whirlwind of Death. If you kill somebody, it's going to speed him up uh, and increase his damage against people who are stunned or have sleep or fear uh, or freeze. Because pretty soon, we're all going to be freezing everybody with Ninja, by the way. We get him tomorrow if you've been collecting every day. On my other two accounts, I've been so busy, they didn't even log in one day. So they're literally a day behind. But Ninja is going to be an amazing champion himself. Uh... We're going to go over him as soon as I get him. <laughs> I'm literally ready to book him out. He's going to be such a boss killer. So stay tuned for that video. I'm telling you, if you're a beginner, if you're a really early player or just so free to play and had bad luck with pools, this guy is going to help change your account. Now, the rest of this, if you need accuracy, take the accuracy. Maybe you want Lore of Steel. You could uh, Master Hexer for his poisons and his HP burn. You could go for uh, a thousand different things you could do. Uh, typically, on a clan boss build, you'll see me go, you know, defense and, and a little bit of protection and then into my retribution, my chance to counterattack. In this case, I need him to be, be my tank, and he actually is difficult. I only take one move of damage on my team before I am never taking damage again, and he has to take the most damage. I had to be careful because... If, if anybody took less damage than him, they became the tank. So I took the strangest route. Basically, I, I took some, some resistance. I didn't want defense. Um, benefit from healing for regular content and shields because I'm not doing that in my game. Uh, heals him when he kills an enemy. That won't happen on the clan boss. And then I've got uh, increases my resist as I take debuffs. And I went for my retribution so I can get counterattacks and it deterrence as well. Hope to get a counterattack if anybody takes takes a stun other than him. It's really not going to happen. But in other content, that could be useful. So th this looks very strange. If he's not your tank, this is probably not what you would do. <laughs> but basically, you know, if you need the support tree, you take what you need in the support tree or you take what you need in the defense tree. It's pretty, pretty basic stuff. So mine does look a little strange. We'll get into my clan boss in a little bit. Let's just show what this guy can do. Um, he doesn't... We can watch his damage, and it is worth noting, but, you know, the arena is all broken weak right now, so let's just take him in here. And uh, I let, let me set up, like, a blender team real quick. I'll just set something up to work. Okay, so, like... The builds on these might be made for other content. I have no idea how strong this is going to be. Like Sinesha, I don't know how she's actually made out at all. Don't know how her speed looks. Uh, I know Skull Crown's at least strong, but I think I have her at, with accuracy, which I should change pretty soon. I did that because I really needed to beat the, uh, the Faction Wars, and I beat it, so now I need to put her back to being a nuker. But what happens? You boost your speed. As long as you go first... For Rackin, you want him to be the next fastest on your team. He brings in everybody, and they have AOE A1s, and they just kill everybody. This is, you know, I don't know if we're going to actually kill him or not, but you can put it on auto. We'll slow it down. Boost the speed. Increase crit rate, crit damage, and then everybody runs in, and you see all the AOEs going off. There's, And now we get the extra AOEs. Again, I'm not built out the way I need to be for this, but he'll get us through this fight. So while we're in here, well, I was going to look at some of his damage, but he just went out and, and did his thing anyway. We'll, we'll just go ahead and let this finish out. But uh, we'll, we'll times to it on one of these weak teams. 
it, it, I know it seems silly to be showing this off when they're not built out very well. But I'm telling you, this this right here could be a very fast way to farm. So just increase the speed. There's the boost. Here comes the beat down, the blender. Everybody would die if they were built out as nukers, and they're not. Ugo's actually going to bring everybody back here. No, we got her. Okay. So anyways, that's, you know, kind of how you build a blender comp, and that's how he could be amazing in it. He actually makes whoever you bring stronger when they come in. Uh, but anyways, so he's good in the arena as as exactly that creating a blender team like really good he actually increases that crit damage you could even build them in your arena team you could build them at 70 percent crit rate and he will make sure they have 100 percent when they do that big attack giving you more room to give them more attack power more crit damage and then he even boosts their crit damage pretty amazing pretty amazing so in regular content you could take this guy uh well, you can take him anywhere. He brings HP burn. He's a frost spider, I think, right now. You can take him into the frost spider and bring him in for an HP burn. Not only that, but get a whole lot of extra damage after he lands that HP burn from the rest of your team. You can bring your mountain king in. You can bring the strongest single target heroes like, uh, well, speaking of HP burns, Ninja also brings that. And then he combusts it. He's amazing on bosses. You can tag him with... For racking the fat, and the fat's gonna make sure that he uses that A1, which actually gives Ninja 15% more of his turn meter back an extra turn. It's absolutely great. So yeah, you kind of get the idea. We don't have to go through a bunch of content. He's great for the dragon. Uh he, he could be the poisoner that kills the dragon. As long as you got the poisons, the HP burn, and you've got that full team counterattack there's pretty much no way to lose. And if you bring you just got to get to the dragon, right? So you can bring your favorite support champions. So the Drakes, right? Uh, you get Ninja tomorrow and you pair him up with someone like Farak and the fat and you've got things going on. Okay. So when I, when I made this guy and I put gear on him, I got my speeds. I truly need, I needed crit rate. I had to switch him over to crit rate gloves instead of crit damage just to get him at 81 percent so that he's critting uh, so his crit damage is not all that high when we look at his total stats uh, his attacks pretty low his everything is a little bit low wait till you see the damage that he does against ultra nightmare uh just on his regular hits but i have room to improve but i have to keep this speed very very tight like 247 so he's you know that's how I'm going to make my stream, my team stronger. Uh, I still haven't even rolled everything up on Fane yet. I've got it as close as I can, but let's get in here and watch what he can do. I have not used, since I tweaked him, I have not used this team on Ultra Nightmare with crit rate on him. And my accuracy was a little bit off on Fane. I had to fix that. I was relying on Frozen Banshee before. So let's, let's just check this out. It's a full auto team. No aura because I need him to stay right front and center. Uh, the first hit, I need him to take the most damage, except for Fane. Fane can heal up the way I have it set up. She'll use her move that heals right after this attack. So he did take the most damage other than Fane. We'll go through our little cycle here. And then there's, there's his move, bringing everybody in. Now we're going to start landing debuffs. Fane healed up. So from here out, he should be the stun target the rest of the fight. And if I could just get enough resistance to not take that stun, this team would definitely one key, one key ultra nightmare, I think. But now, now we're going. We got HP burn up. We got poisons out. Everybody's going to start doing their job. There's more poisons. So let's just kind of watch this go through and see how it plays out. Hopefully, uh, my damage. So.
it is, you gotta love the fat. You gotta love the fat. So his damage is great. He's doing A1s for 60,000, A2s for 100,000, and that's with not very much crit damage. To get my uh, extra 8, 9 million damage, all I have to do is get my crit rate closer to 200%, my crit damage closer to 200% on all of these heroes, and I'm going to finally have it. The fat is amazing. So he brought everybody else's damage, always did about, about 8 million. He brought them up by almost 2 million each. Fame went up about 4, 4 million herself, and then... Uh, He's bringing in 13 million by himself. Absolutely, absolutely not somebody you want to sit on. It's just one of those heroes. You know he's good, but when you get him and you build him and you put your, your energy into him, you won't regret it. He's a great hero. Uh, again, great for uh, blender comps, great for bosses, great for your faction war. Just a great champ. So tomorrow, tomorrow we will all get ninja. That's another person who might fit really well in that slot. Just raw damage against that, that clan boss might be worth doing. But he'll be tricky to speed to him. His A1 gives him 15% turn meter increase, I believe. And if you're counterattacking, if you have an ally attack, it's going to get really tricky trying to keep up with exactly where he's going to be on the turn meter bar. So that's something that is going to have to be explored I'm sure that all the great minds will come together and figure out how to make him work. But definitely get your ninja. But it, that, tomorrow is going to be a pretty exciting day. I'm, I think he's going to help so many people out with their Doom Tower bosses. He brings three turns of HP burn and then he can ignite them instantly. Uh, he can explode poison. He can do a lot of great things. Absolutely going to be an amazing champ. So I'll be going over him as soon as possible. Uh, but for now, the fat. Guys, if you got him, you you should build him out. Uh, I hate that I don't have anything set up for really strong AoEs at the moment to show him in a blender comp, but absolutely will help you speed up your arena team. Can up the clan boss damage, whether you're unkillable or not. If you speed tune that guy in, and if he's not being the stun target, he's going to get many more counterattacks. Uh, in my case, if I can make Fane the target, she's very difficult to make the target because she heals herself with her, uh, her A3. That makes it very hard to keep her the stun target. It messes it up. So for now, I may have to try to bring in maybe a Nax one day in place of Fane. And that would also allow me to make a next my tank and then i'll be good to go that way too but anyways i hope you enjoyed it don't sit on him he's amazing thank you for your time uh thank you for all the support and the subs please keep them coming uh our channel's growing until next time enjoy the grind